1953, Earth experienced a war of the worlds. Common bacteria stopped the aliens, but it didn't kill them. Instead, the aliens lapsed into a state of deep hibernation. Now the aliens have been resurrected, more terrifying than ever before. In 1953, aliens started taking over the world. Today, they're taking over our bodies. These must be on display at all times. Our people have been trained to deal with anyone not wearing their identification. I'd remember that. We've had two security anomalies, Harrison. One, the representative from Sri Lanka couldn't go through the heat sensor ID because she's wearing a pacemaker. And we've had a last minute replacement for the representative from Russia. So his heat sensor ID didn't check out. I wonder why the replacement. Okay. Good evening. Thanks. Good evening. 
Okay, let's seal them in. I, uh, I want to thank each of you for coming. Due to the somewhat controversial nature of this meeting, a number of countries have declined our invitation to attend, yet nonetheless they eagerly await the outcome of these discussions. So I want you all to know that the eyes of many people around the world are upon us this weekend. I think the best way to begin is simply by introducing ourselves. I'm Harrison Blackwood, United States, director of the Blackwood Project, a government-funded unit whose mission is to combat the alien menace in America. Norton Drake. United States. I work on the Blackwood Project as a communications and computer expert. Dr. Susanna McCullough, United States, Microbiology and Psychology. I am Gabriel Morales of the Republic of Peru. I am assistant to the Minister of the Interior, and I am involved with matters of an unusual nature. Dr. Sonertha Menethong. I teach astronomy in the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka at university. It is my job to investigate and coordinate all reports of unidentified flying objects. Dr. Su Tak, Beijing Institute of Extraterrestrial Research. Dr. Maurice Bernobi, last year's Nobel Prize winner in physics. I've been the clearinghouse on the African continent for information of close encounters for over a quarter of a century. Dr. Leon Dagachev, astrophysicist, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Last but not least, I'm Jerry Raymond. I'm a photographer, I have a doctorate in celestial astronomy, and I'm president of the Skywatch Society in Christchurch, New Zealand. Good, I think that's everybody. Look, I uh, know this abandoned old campus in this drafty gymnasium are way below the standards of comfort you're accustomed to in your travels, but I'm sure you all understand the need for absolute security. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to begin the actual discussions about the alien problem. And this could be the single most important event in determining what life forms are going to exist on this planet in the future. Thank you, Edmonton. I am nothing without your company. To life, immortal. One of our units reports there is a secret meeting of humans from across the planet who know of our existence. It has always been amusing how long it took for the humans to organize any global resistance. This meeting could be a major opportunity for us. If we find the location of that meeting and destroy those human leaders, our task on this planet will be considerably easier. Your counsel is wise. This shall be our number one priority. To life, immortal. To life, immortal. We've got a lot of ground to cover, very little time to do it in. I think our goals for the next two days are pretty clear. We're here to exchange information about the alien invaders, to establish for the first time, really, the extent of their threat globally, and most important to my mind, develop a planetary strategy for combating the aliens. Now, we brought this equipment in to help you with your presentations, and uh, I thought we could begin by examining the documentation I know you've all brought along. Norton? Excuse me, Dr. Blackwood. Rather than proceeding ahead recklessly, it might be helpful to open the floor to any other thoughts regarding the proposed agenda. Well, there's nothing written in stone, Doctor. What do you have in mind? Self-determination, in the form of everyone having some say in how these talks should proceed. I think for the sake of expediency, we listen to Dr. Blackwood's plan. What difference does it make? We all have something to contribute. Doctor, do you have a problem with the way things are set up here, or is it just outdated Cold War posturing? Dr. Bernobi, 
I don't know what the criteria for attendance here is. Perhaps it's questionable research like yours. Research that has yet to be replicated. Gentlemen, gentlemen, it's way too early in the morning for this sort of thing, don't you think? We have less than two days. To spend more than 20 seconds on this kind of procedural matter is negligent at best and criminal at worst. And Dr. McCullough and Mr. Drake have prepared the United States presentation. If nobody has any objection, we could begin. According to archaeological dating, we know the aliens have visited this planet for the last 2,000 years. They have periodically visited many places on Earth using several different kinds of spaceships. Now, the oldest ship that we've encountered was at the Westesquin Indian Reservation. This was a walking spaceship, over 600 years old. In this century, we know the aliens arrived on the east coast of the United States in late October 1938 on a reconnaissance mission. The main invasion force arrived in 1953, as it apparently did around the world. would have conquered the planet if they had not succumbed to our bacteria. Now, the United States government placed what they thought were the remains of dead aliens into steel drums, and these drums were placed in different dump sites throughout the continental United States. One of the dump sites, a secret facility called Fort Jericho in northern Nevada, was the first confirmed location of an alien resurrection. There was a large number of steel drums in storage. About a year and a half ago, a few of these drums accidentally came in contact with radiation. The radiation neutralized the bacteria we thought had killed the aliens, and they came back to life. The aliens searched out the war machines from the invasion of 1953 and mounted a lethal attack. At this point, we can only estimate how many aliens are in the United States, somewhere between 1,000 and 5,000. But this number keeps growing. Now, we first discovered aliens at the site of what appeared to be a terrorist operation. We were investigating the scene, and we think it started here. The count is still incomplete. We still have two quadrants to check. It appears we have six. Six. Only six, but there were hundreds. Maybe thousands. What is his problem? Aliens walk the earth again, and we let them get away. Now, we've had contact with a renegade mutant alien named Quinn, and he has confirmed our worst suspicions. The alien's goal is world domination. In 
four short years, a force of millions of aliens are scheduled to arrive here. So let's see what we're dealing with. Structurally, they're more like jellyfish than mammals. By examining DNA molecules, it appears that the aliens possess humans using a cell phase matching technique. The alien cells literally overtake the human cells through osmosis. As a result, they have access to the host body's intelligence and can control them physically, and yet there is no outward way for anyone to know. Physiologically, the aliens have a liquid core which carries neurological information as well as arterial matter. Their stable, upright carriage is supported by a web-like muscular structure. The alien stands between five and a half and seven feet tall. It has a cyclops eye in the center of its forehead, and it is a biped. It's got three fingers, three toes, and three arms. Apparently, it has no skeletal structure per se. One of the alien's most remarkable characteristics is their ability to osmose into the human body, actually meld their body into ours. We have footage that was taken by a local news photographer. Aliens have never possessed animals or children. Because of this, we theorize they need a certain minimal mass to occupy. They can be anywhere, and they can be anyone. Soldiers. Those are my men. Not anymore. Waitresses. Bikers. Homeless, paramedics, they can take over just about any. Once they took over an abandoned town, and they stalked it with the aliens. Telling me all of these people have aliens inside them? The life immortal. Life immortal. Just a hunch. To life immortal. To life immortal. To life immortal. They took over an abandoned warehouse. They brought humans for the aliens to possess. No! This is really sick, Blackwood. This whole town's been set up to recruit host bodies for aliens. <laughs> the most frightening thing of all, they have absolutely no regard for human life. Not since Nazi Germany has the world witnessed such callous and brutal treatment of human beings. They mutilate. Aim. To them, we're an inferior species and they treat us like one. I've heard of morbid curiosity, but there is a limit. Look at this. It's incredible. His head was literally torn off. Now, we know the alien threat is real. And the future of our planet is dependent upon what we accomplish here. 
Unless we transcend partisanship and we begin to cooperate, we may just as well hand the earth over to them right now. combination, microbiology and psychology? I don't know. I'm constantly amazed at how often they overlap. But we've been talking about me all through dinner. Tell me a little more about what you do. From your introduction and the background that your government sent us, I couldn't really figure out exactly what you did. I think that's the idea. Now, these aliens that we were talking about this morning, are they the same ones you've been sighting in your country? Yes, yes, exactly the same. Most curious, um, we have tried to communicate with them, but uh, as of yet, unable to set up dialogue. They're very intractable. What about their numbers? I mean, how many do you estimate? Well, I can only guess. No more than 10,000. That many? We have a big country, sir. Paul, having a good time? Oh, right. Norton, I'm having a great time. I have the number of men I need. I don't know who the hell is who around here. And I am supposed to trust that clown from Russia. I'm having a wonderful time, Norton. Come on, big guy. Wake up and smell the caviar. It's amazing. I don't have time, Norton. Just no time. Why do I like looking at this? I do not know, but I like it too. Advocacy. Intelligence has collected vital information. The humans meet near the city called Philadelphia. It is imperative we locate that meeting. Our kind is spreading across that city as we speak. We have no evidence of alien activity in my country at all. However, we believe with some certainty that aliens walked our land many thousands of years ago. During an archaeological dig funded by my government, some extraordinary discoveries were made. While excavating a previously untouched crypt deep within the hillside tombs of the Andes, a large and strange artifact was uncovered. This never before seen object was removed. It was brought to my ministry where it was carefully examined in detail by my staff. After a very close examination, we found that inside this artifact was this. We detected a soft x-ray of 93 angstroms, nothing dangerous, and it emits a 33,000 hertz percussive sound out of the range of the ordinary ear. This sound mirrors in many ways the audio tape of the alien transmission you forwarded to us in preparation for this conference. To date, we are not sure what function this alien object has. I think you're going to find some pretty interesting parallels in the tape that Norton Drake has put together on alien technology. Okay. Here are some examples based on eyewitness reports of the aliens utilizing everyday items to make high-tech tools and devices. There's a report from Canada where kitchen appliances were jerry-rigged to make radio receivers and locators. 
and a story from New Jersey where the aliens were seen using a vacuum cleaner like device to locate an alien warship buried underground. They've even used their technology to create artwork unlike anything we've ever seen before. We also believe that they can communicate over light years in a matter of seconds using their makeshift devices. So, as we've seen, the alien technology runs from the lethal to the sublime. The closest that we've ever come to actually examining an alien artifact was in an automated power plant north of San Francisco. The aliens had taken over the facility, brutally killed every single member of the crew, and then had gone on to set up this bizarre device. When I finally found the aliens we'd been looking for, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a device using a logic system foreign to ours in every way. It was fascinating. After they'd gone, Dr. McCullough and I went up to examine this strange alien handiwork. They're gone. What is that? That's alien medical science, Colonel. It works like a distillery. Somehow they're able to reduce the brains to their very essence. That one very potent drop of this extract. And the sick alien is cured. This is a perfect example of the alien logic systems and problem solving abilities. It's absolutely amazing. It's so complex and it's so simple. Something not of this world. I can't even tell if it's elemental or synthetic. We are going to learn so much. But apparently they'd anticipated this, and the device was booby-trapped. want anyone to get a hold of their technology. Excuse me. This note was left at the security desk. Why? We don't know. Colonel Ironhorse has brought me a note. One of the delegates to this conference has accused Senor Morales of having faked his presentation. This is outrageous. Who says my presentation was fraudulent? The important thing is not who made the accusation, but that it's been made at all. We're here to deal with the alien threat on this planet, but we're being stopped at every turn by a carefully orchestrated campaign to undermine this conference, and I, for one, think an explanation is in order. Why is it? The automatic United States reaction is always to point the finger and accuse us.
Thank you for your hospitality. Advocate, we are expecting intelligence any moment from one of our agents. They say we will value this information greatly. That is not good enough. We need faster action. Time is wasting. If you cannot fulfill the mission, we will find agents who can. But advocate... Silence! I am nothing without your counsel. Should we send more troops? We should send operatives who are more efficient. I can't believe we've blown this opportunity. We haven't blown it yet. The question is, what are we going to do to salvage this conference? Could the Russians know something the rest of us don't? We don't even know it's Arkachev. We've got to deal with this head on. Let's go. Obviously, there has been a lot of speculation as to who made this accusation against Senor Morales. I'd like to suggest that since our time is short, that we just continue with the program. Pending, of course, the outcome of research into Senor Morales' presentation. Dr. Blackwood, if I might. I believe an explanation is in order. I was the one who accused Senor Morales. My apologies, Senor. My accusation was totally unfounded. You are right, Dr. Blackwood. I have been a very disruptive influence in these proceedings, but I've been so with very good reason. Soviet military intelligence has been checking out our security reports that indicate that one among us is not who he says he is. That one among us is an alien. Couldn't we tell if one of us was in fact an alien, Doctor? You mean by visual inspection? Exactly. No. Doctor, that we are exposed to an environment poisoned by an alien presence I am formally requesting security assistance from my embassy. As soon as arrangements can be made, I will be leaving. Senor Morales, if I told you I could definitely tell if anyone here was an alien. Can you do that, Doctor? Okay, now Dr. McCauley is going to uh, stick your fingers with a sterilized instrument. She'll take out a drop of blood. She'll put it under her microscope and we are going to be able to tell instantly if anyone amongst us is an alien. This was definitely not part of the agenda. I, I refuse. Oh, now we can't be victim to this kind of paranoia. And this test is designed to instantly allay anyone's fears if there's an alien amongst us. I'll be very happy to be the first one to go. Doctor, would you choose a sterilized instrument for my use? Before I agree to take this blood test, if I could speak to my home country first. But that would be against the strict communications blackout that we've all been observing. What I am would it be if whoever wanted to contact their people could? Then we could do these infernal blood tests and get on with it. What choice do we have? Well, I'm afraid we don't have any choice at all. Then I'd like to make a call. I would as well. It's going to take some time. I... I've got to get some secure lines in here. I... Harrison, are we really going to do this? Yeah, I'm afraid that we are. Yes, advocate. We've narrowed down the location. It's in a section outside of Philadelphia called Cheltenham. Yes, we know. You know? One of our foreign operatives has managed to contact us from inside the meeting. We have the exact location and are making plans to destroy them. This is the most important operation we have had since arriving on this planet. We succeed now. 
we will have taken a giant step in annihilating the humans once and for all. And the Earth shall be ours. Hello! Now, now! Wait, wait, wait! Wait, wait, wait! Wait, wait, wait! Wait, wait, wait! Rezaj! What? Rezaj! What? Rezaj! What? Rezaj! I have got major problems with what's going on here. Meaning? Meaning I can no longer guarantee the security for this operation. There are just too many variables out of my control. I highly recommend that we call this whole thing off. It's just gotten too risky. We have a global alien problem, remember? That's what's too risky. Let's go. I think I have to remind you that we are at war with an enemy who is so insidious that it could be any one of us. Now, I think it's time that we all started working together. Dr. Blackwood, I must interrupt. My superiors are very concerned about the taking of any intrusive test. We must find another way. Well, then forget about the tests. But let's keep these discussions going. Now, what have we got to lose? If, in fact, there is an alien among us, they already know who we are and what we're about. I say let them test our resolve. Let them learn about our passion for freedom. And if this alien were to leave with all our identities? Well, I don't think that's going to happen. I think in the short time we have left, we're going to ferret this alien out. And we're going to capture it. I, for one, say let's do it. I'm willing. Yeah, as am I. Okay. Now, I believe that Colonel Ironhorse has a presentation that's going to be a lot more encouraging than what we've seen so far. I'm sorry, Harrison. Due to the new security situation, I think it best I excuse myself. Seal them in. Come with me. We've been painting a pretty negative picture about our battle with the aliens, but there is a bright side. They can be killed, and we're getting pretty efficient at it. One particular incident comes to mind. The aliens had broken into a secure army facility in search of war machines and weapons left over from their earlier invasion. Our intelligence discovered this plan. We wiped them out. What they turn into after they die is the only real indication we have that these were once human beings who are now possessed by aliens. We can be fooled. You're wasted. Pretty 
a weird student. As a result of an exothermic reaction, their cells become a horrible, roiling mass of decomposing alien and human tissue. They are vulnerable, and so are we. We have already lost a member of our team. We've lost many soldiers in combat. Of course, all the innocent people. The aliens are deadly. And they promise as their numbers increase, and they become more sophisticated. They promise to become even deadlier. What's happening here? have to be ten. So it will be up to you out here. And then he back to the gym. This is what you've been trained for. Good luck. Dr. Stanton, your security has obviously been compromised. What do you plan to do? We're going to have to defend ourselves. Bring them on, mate. Look, try and raise the colonel. Colonel, can you hear me? Stay back away from this door. This is Norton, Colonel. We've been found out. It's the aliens. and we don't have time. What? We should surrender to the aliens. What? What? But Harrison, you... We don't have any other choice. You're out of your mind. Look, we're hopelessly outnumbered here. 
What can we hope for if we surrender? Talk with them. Reason with them. Look, this could be the opportunity we've been looking for. But by your own admission, Doctor, they hold no regard for human life. Look, I know that if we can all present our case, if we can just talk to one of them... You are. Stop her. I am one of them. So, the bus is my us. You were right, Dr. Blackwood. He said we'd find the spy amongst us, and we did. You humans are such fools. That weapon is empty. You insult my intelligence. Stop her! <laughs> What happened? She went out the window. Omegans, on the double! We've got to get out of here. We've got to protect these delegates first. There! Put them right under there. We'll draw the aliens out of here, sir. You! Open that up! People! Let's go! You, four court. The boil room. Plan B. Come on, people, let's go. What happens once we draw them out? Trap them. Okay, let's move. Down there. Okay, let's go. Norton, you all set? Ready, Colonel. Let's do it. They're coming.
down and turn on. Brilliant. Wave one. It's time, yes. But tomorrow... Tomorrow is another day.